Second Street opens this week, this Wednesday. And Tony Lamond is now based in America, looking forward to her homecoming. Uh, and it promises to be a great time for her here in Melbourne because we Melburnians have bought more than $2 million worth of 42nd Street tickets uh, when they went on sale uh, last year. So it's uh, not only a great show, but a great welcoming home to Tony Lamond. It must make you feel good, Tony. It sure does, but hey, up that, it's now $6 million. Well, I'm not surprised. And, of course, you've already been on tour around Australia, haven't you, Tony? Yes, and we just finished up in Auckland uh, two weeks ago. So we've done... Uh, so this is the... Um, the Finally, we've c come to Melbourne. It's been a long time coming, I know, but uh, circumstances have not permitted until now. And I think uh, maybe the timing is right. Is there something very special about playing to your own hometown, Tony? Oh very definitely and especially in that theatre. I mean I walked in the other day and I was so overwhelmed by memories of Pajama Game, more so than Gypsy and Oliver, which were the other shows I did at that uh, theatre, but Pajama Game which was my first big break and uh, it just uh, was incredible. Well, Tony, I'm sure you've had your eyes on the part of Maggie Jones for a long, long time. And like myself, you probably saw 42nd Street on Broadway years ago, did you? Well, I saw it. No, I didn't see it on Broadway. I saw it in Los Angeles the day after it opened. Was Jerry Orbach in that cast? Pardon me? It was Jerry Orbach in that cast? Orbach wasn't doing it in Los Angeles. A guy called John Cipher, who was in um, Hill Street Blues, I think he was one of the stars of that. And who played Maggie Jones in L.A.? Cook who uh, created the role because in the original film uh, there was no Maggie Jones they were all men and Gower Champion when he was uh, casting the show he said like everybody you know Julian Marsh and the, 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 the stage manager and, and the choreographer and the two writers he said there's all these men and then somebody said well why don't we base it on Comden and Green um, the writers who just uh, got a t another the Tony last year for Will Rogers Follies and it all sort of fell into place and then they said well why don't we get Carol Cook and Maggie Jones was born because it was always Jones and Barry the writing team. Carol of course was in Australia for Hello Dolly wasn't she Tony? Dolly and I went to see Carol in uh, in um, uh, 42nd Street and went backstage and made myself known to her because for years people had been saying to me do you know Carol Cook oh you should you're very much like her. And they'd been saying the same thing to her. So we finally got to know each other. And um, when I called a couple of years later in uh, 1986, I was cast in a stock company version of it in San Bernardino, California. And I called her and said, well, at last it's happened. I'm playing Maggie Jones. And she and Tom, her husband, came down to see me which was a big thrill. Well, that's a real thrill to have uh, have her sitting in the audience. How's, how's life in America been for you, uh, Tony? Go any further, so was Ruby Keeler. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, how exciting. Ruby, of course, only died a month or so ago. I dedicated the performance to her that night. Isn't that lovely? Yes. Um, she lived in Palm Springs, which was only an hour away from where we were, but I'm sorry to interrupt. That's all right, but you had the story to tell, and, you, and uh, it was a lovely tag. Tony, uh, life in America, uh, how is it for you at the moment? You, you've done things like Starsky and Hutch and Love Boat? Well, I did all that. You know, I've spent 17 years in America, but I have been out here since last June touring with the show. So I, I was only back last week, as a matter of fact. I went back to to Hawaii for a little bit of a rest between Auckland and here. But um, I haven't lived in Los Angeles um, now for uh, two years. So um, it's been life in Australia. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to be doing. After we finish with this show in 1994, I'm going to make up my mind where I'm going to stay, whether it's to go back to America or come home to stay. So that decision is pending. I think it's wonderful. You've, you've got just the marvellous staying power. We talked to so many people from the days when we all grew up together at GTV9 mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of them have either dropped out and done different things. But you've pursued that career and gone from strength to strength and I, I, I'm thrilled for you. Thank you, Bruce, but it's not just a career, you know. It's my life. It's the reason I live. 
uh, and I think that makes a lot of difference. Hey, you've come a long way since the Golden Horseshoe Review at Disneyland, Tony. <laughs> I remember that. I tell you who's in town at the moment, someone you'd well remember, Kevin Colson, who's doing Aspects of Love. Of course, he's across the street from me. Yes. Yes, I believe there was a picture in the paper a couple of weeks ago of us all. And there's Kevin, and, and there's me, and Evie. Bill McCormick and myself. That's right. That's you, must, you must think sometimes that your mother, Stella, and your father would be so proud to, to be sitting down there on Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday night's going to be really something. We did our first preview on Friday night, and we did two previews yesterday. And if it's any indication, it's just going to go through the roof in Melbourne. Melbourne's ready for this show because it's a show of hope in the, de in the Great Depression of 1933. And if there's anything Melbourne needs, it's, it's cheering up. And by the way, it's such a beautiful city. It's always been a beautiful city, but it's even more beautiful now. And a friend of mine has uh, come out from America to, um, to do some uh, writing with me. And um, we, we had been kids together when I was an usherette at the, at the Metro in the Capitol and she was working in office jobs and, and things. And we walked down Collins Street and was saying, oh, remember that? Oh, remember Russell Collins was there. And remember, oh, there was where the Metro was. And oh, remember when we used to go to Ernest Hillier's next to the Regent and, and, and have those gorgeous thick chocolate shakes and you know all those memories came flooding back she said remember we used to meet on the chemist corner well of course it's not there on collins and swanson anymore it's a it's a little plaza there or well, you'd meet under the clocks no, we'd, we'd meet at the chemist court under the clocks as a pickup joint. We were, it was too, yes. We were innocent kids only interested in show business. We used to go and sit in Pixie's Coffee Lounge behind the Tivoli and hope to see the Tivoli stars. <laughs> that was our child. And, of course, all this was uh, recounted in your biography, <laughs> the first half, which became a bestseller in just eight days. Did you also do a season early on, Tony, at the Plaza Northcote with your parents? With two and a half years I did at the Plaza Northcote and uh, I went straight in there from dancing school. So that was where I got a lot of experience and of course I was ready then when the big breaks came along. What's, ha what's happening to Helen Reddy in America these days? Well, she never stops working. She uh, she crisscrosses time zones like you and I would go to work in the tram in the morning. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of work. It's not like big career moves anymore, uh, but it's there's a lot of stuff where she... Well, she just did a world tour where she uh, worked all over Europe and came out and uh, worked in the Far East. And she's taken control of her own career. She's been ripped off by one management too many, so now she does it all herself so she's doing pretty well Tracy her daughter it has been um, inducted into the director's guild she's been uh, directing um, um, videos and, and commercials she and her husband Nicholas Donat have, um, do a lot of commercials and her son Jordan is um, has a big job with uh, Def Jam Records in, um, in New York Wonderful for the whole family. But going back in your days, of course, is in, in the woods in in Sydney. Going back into your early days, Tony, radio uh, played uh, no small part. But when you were ten years of age, you toured with people like George Wallace. That's well, uh, not quite. A little bit later than that, but I started in radio um, at age ten because there were a lot of children's and teenage programs on radio in those days, and um, I made my first appearance, of course, at the uh, at three uh, X Y, and I was supposed to sing "God Save the King," and I forgot the words. <laughs> did you also appear on Kiora Sports Parade with Max and Stella? I sure did, and did many shows for three A W, and I. I was also in the first Miss Teenage Quest um, that was sponsored by 3AW. 
and Ray Chapman was uh, did uh, all the uh, comparing for that. And you know, I was given the key to the city last Tuesday night in the Melbourne Town Hall, which is one of the biggest thrills of my life. And I find out I'm one of the very few, if any, of Australian entertainers that have got it. Joan Sutherland hasn't got the, the key to the city of Melbourne. Well, you deserve it because I've always contended, Tony Lamont, that you are the greatest talent Australia has ever produced. Oh, but Philip, you're such a fan, aren't you? He only said that to me last week, too. You're one, uh, did he? I'm, I'm fickle, Tony, aren't I? But, but darling, you know how I feel about you. What are the showstoppers that you sing in 42nd Street? Well, amazingly enough, I don't get to sing a song right through in this in this show. I play more of a comedy part and do bits and pieces. No, I don't get any showstoppers in this in this one. But it's such a good show to be with, and it's such a good part. And it's sort of like I'm uh, I'm the gutsy, funny lady that just wanders on and off. The real stars of this show, of course, are the dancers. But it's such an ensemble feel to the show um, because we've got, you know, the wonderful Nancy Hayes and William Zappa, who plays uh, Julian Marsh, and um, Todd and Leone, the two new young Australian stars. You'll be absolutely... Todd McKenney and Leone Page, you'll be knocked out by them. And 40 of the best dancers in Australia. It Look really is a very exciting show to be part of. Looking forward to it. I'll be there on Saturday night to look for you, Tony. Saturday, all right. What about your son, Tony Shorten? Will he be in town to see you? He's doing Into the Woods. He's playing the baker in Into the Woods. Stephen Sondheim's Into the Woods in Sydney at the moment at the, uh, uh, at the Opera House. Well, the whole family's busy, and that's the way it should be. Tony, it's been a delight speaking to you. I don't have to wish you well. It'll be a great success. A uh, 42nd Street comes to Melbourne with Tony Lamond. Thank you. And, and all I can say, because you've said it to me a million times, star that you are, shut your face. <laughs> uh, back at you, Phil. <laughs> 42nd Street's Tony Lamond. Come on.